Hey guys, it's Oscar from The Coding Universe here, and this is episode 8 of my Java game development series. In this episode, I'll be covering using entities. So, an entity is basically a game object. For example, a ball or a box. That could be an entity. I've created a new package called entities, and now I'm going to create a new interface called entity. In this interface, I'm going to walk you through some of the methods we're going to put in this interface. The first method is going to be called draw. No parameters, just draw. The second method is going to be called update, and we'll take an integer called delta as a parameter. If you want to know how this works, just look at episode 7. public void set location so we can set the location of our entity to an x and a y variable note that I've chosen doubles because I want that added precision and just the set x method and the set y method the set width method. This method will be used for rectangular collision detection and of course the set height method as well. And a get x method, a get y, a get y method, a get height method, And a get width method. Width. For collision detection, we're also going to add a method of public boolean, which is going to be called intersects. And as parameter, it will take another entity. So now we can create an abstract class called abstract entity. Make it abstract and add it, add the interface entity. Okay, so we're going to create some protected variables of type double x, y, width, and height, and we're also going to create a protected variable of type rectangle, the AWT variant, and call it hitbox. We're going to initialize it immediately to a new rectangle with no parameters. In the constructor, we're going to specify an x, a y, a width, and a height. and adjust our variables accordingly. Okay, there we go. Save all. I'm going to omit the draw method, meaning we're going to force the subclasses of abstract entity to implement this method the update method, we're going to omit, omit that as well set location we can assign our x and y variables set x and lastly the intersects method so we're going to set our hitbox bounds, so hitbox.set bounds, just leave it. And we're also going to typecast every arg or parameter to type integer because the bounds set bounds method works with integers. 
I know small loss in precision, but it's not that it's not that important. So return hitbox dot get dot intersects other so the other entity dot get x other entity dot get y get width and get height. There we go. Now to implement the dx and dy movements we saw in episode 4, we're going to create a new interface called movable move -able entity. And we're going to make it so that it extends entity. It's going to add the methods public double get dx public double get dy public void set dx as parameter dx public void set dy as a parameter dy and that's about it so we can create a new abstract class which we're going to call abstract movable entity we're going to make it ex so that it extends abstract entity and implements abstract movable entity no not abstract view abstract movable uh, no, just movable entity. There we go. Add the constructor and add two protected variables type double dx and dy and we're going to initialize them to zero And we have to implement all these methods as well. So return dx, return dy. The stop dx is dx, and this dot dy is dy. And we can also implement the update method. So this dot x is this dot x plus delta times dx and this dot y is plus delta times dy. Okay. This should be all we're going to do this tutorial in the entities classes. So we can create a new example or a new class in the examples package and call it entity demo. Just copy the code in from simple OpenGL renderer, change the names. And there we go. So we're going to create our own instances of the entities. For example, we could create a private static class called box, which would extend the movable abstract abstract movable entity class. Add a constructor. And the draw method gl rect d x y x plus width y plus height we 
can also create uh, an instance of abstract movable entity called point. Maybe we'll just extend abstract entity because we don't want it to be movable. Abstract point. Abstract entity. The unimplemented methods and the constructor. In the draw method, we'll just specify gl begin, gl points, gl n, gl vertex to f x y or 2d. And in the update method, we'll do nothing. So now, in the initialization portion, we can create an initialization code portion for our entities. We can create a variable called um, box of type entity, and we can initialize it to new box. The x will be 100, the y, the y will be 100, the width will be 50, and the height will also be 50. We can also create another entity called point, use new point, and we're going to set the location to 0, 10x, 10y. Point doesn't need width and height just realized. So we can set those as 1. Okay, now we also need the delta stuff we created earlier. We can copy that in. Um, but last frame is get time and then here we can update our box with an integer delta which is retrieved by invoking get delta and we can also update the point which is kind of pointless ha ah, get the joke never mind okay and we can render the box and the point. Well, actually, the point and then the box. There, that's prettier. So, if I were to run this, here's the box, and it's fairly noticeable, but here is the point. Oops. Okay, now we can also do something with collision detection. So maybe we can set the position of the point to mouse stop get x and four hundred and eighty <coughs> the height minus mouse dot get y minus one. And we can also say if box intersects point box set <coughs> dx. Oh wait, we have to declare box as a movable entity. Movable entity. Set dx to uh, zero point two. So now the points under my mouse cursor, as you can see, and when I hover it over the box, it starts moving 
Fantastic. This was episode 8 of my Java game development series. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.